Hey, what's going on guys? So I've had a lot of people commenting on videos asking me how I feel about what's going on in America right now. And I'm talking more specifically about um, everything that's being said about law enforcement and police officers and specific cases. Um, I'm not gonna name any specific cases. You guys know which ones I'm talking about. And people are just asking what my opinion is on everything going on. Um, I'm not really one to speak on specific cases or to say this was right, that was wrong, because the reality of the whole situation is I wasn't there, so I don't know the entire story. I can watch a news clip like anybody else and say, based off of this clip, this is what I would have done different or this or that, whatever. But the reality is I'm not gonna speak on something that I don't know anything about. With that being said, um, another question that I've been getting asked a lot about, whether it's on YouTube or just in person, is how I feel about these protests. And I will tell you that I feel like these protests are a positive thing. And the reason I say that is it's bringing light to a lot of issues that have been issues for a long time, but it's kind of opening people's eyes to different aspects and different points of view. Now, one thing that I do not agree with is the looting, the stealing, the burning of, of you know buildings and businesses and vehicles and all the things that people are doing during this time um, to just act crazy and to, to take advantage of a situation, especially as vulnerable as all this is, I do not agree with that. With that being said, my own personal beliefs, my own personal opinions, I do feel like to a certain extent, some of these actions, even though I don't condone them, are helping to push some of the issues. Now, again, I'm not saying it's okay. I'm not saying I agree with it. But even though I agree and I stand behind peaceful protests, unfortunately, history has shown us that peaceful protest is only going to get you so far. So that's my opinion on it. Like I said, I'm not going to get into detail about specific cases. I'm not going to say this is how I feel about this or this is how I feel about that. I have my own personal opinions and that, those are the kinds of things that I keep to myself because I, I'm not going to speak on something that I don't know everything about. What I am going to say in this video is I kind of want to admit some things and get some things off my chest. Um, being a Hispanic male, especially in Texas here where I live, at least for my personal experiences, I really haven't had to deal with a lot of injustice. I haven't had to deal with a lot of racism and stuff like that. I was raised a certain way and I was raised to believe that everybody's the same, everybody's equal. And that's how I've treated everybody my entire life. I've never had anything against anyone for no reason and especially not just because of the color of their skin. I've just been very fortunate in that aspect in the way that I grew up and the people that I've surrounded myself with and the people that I'm around on a daily basis, whether or not I'm working. But what I will tell you is just because I haven't had to deal with that racism personally doesn't mean that it's not an issue. Now, I have had to deal with, you know, going into a store, people looking at me a little bit different. A lot of people are kind of shocked when they find out that I'm even a police officer because some places, and it's been very rare, but it has happened. Some places have seen me. I'm a Hispanic guy. Now I have facial hair, but you know, I'm not a small guy, even though I'm not huge. I'm not a small guy. I'm covered in tattoos um, and none of my tattoos are anything negative, but there is a generation or a group of people who view tattoos as something negative. So I have been looked at in a different light. I have been followed around in stores, little things like that. And I'm not trying to make this about me, but I, I am trying to make the point of, even though I know it's there, I have not had to deal with it firsthand, okay? So with that, there was a few different things that I've been hearing, reading, watching here recently. And I wanna point these things out because they made a lot of sense and they really opened my eyes to a lot of things. I thought that I was very educated as far as this whole situation went um, in the way that I viewed certain things, but I quickly learned that I wasn't seeing things the way they could have been seen. And I'll get to that here in a second. So one of the things that I heard that kind of got me reading and, and digging into this a little bit more was 
there was people, a group of people, and I don't know who it was, but it was a group of people and they were saying, everybody's speaking up, everybody's speaking up, everybody's speaking up. And somebody said, now is not the time to speak up. Now is the time to listen. And that kind of hit me. And that's the reason why it's taken me so long to make a video and to put out how I feel about certain situations is because I wanted to listen. I can't expect to know everything about a situation that I've never been in. I can say, yes, I have a general understanding of it. I've seen this from a distance, but I'm not going to fully understand the topic if I have not been involved in it. So I decided I wanted to sit back and listen. And there was two people and two conversations that really, really stood out to me during this time. And there's there's a, plenty of other things that I've been looking at and reading and, and kind of hit home with me and just made me realize that I knew less than what I thought I did. But there's two specifically that I want to point out. And hopefully I can find those videos and I'll put them in here so you guys can check that out. But the first one was Nick Cannon speaking, right? Nick Cannon was talking about the Black Lives Matter movement. Now, I want it to be known I stand behind the Black Lives Matter movement. I feel like we need to pay attention a little bit more. We need to listen a little bit more. And even though it's not something, again, that I've dealt with firsthand, I stand behind this. So, again, my personal opinion, I speak for nobody else but myself. But Nick Cannon was talking, and he was talking about when Black Lives Matter started speaking up and started saying things, you had people jump in and start saying, all lives matter. Now, what I wanted to admit was, unfortunately, that was my mindset. I've been raised and I've been taught that everybody is the same no matter what. So when I heard Black Lives Matter, I was saying to myself, of course, Black Lives Matter. All lives matter. And that was my mindset. And that's a lot of people's mindset. Unfortunately, that's not the message you're trying to portray. When they say Black Lives Matter, like Nick Cannon is talking about when he's speaking, he's not saying other lives don't matter. He's not saying that black lives matter more. He's just saying black lives matter. Level playing field. That's what he was trying to get across. And when other people say, well, all lives matter, all lives matter, you're kind of drowning out the message that is being portrayed. And I didn't realize that that's what was happening until I started listening to this. He has a reference in there and it was funny to me, but the reality is, even though it was a funny reference, he was kind of being witty about it. It made so much sense. And like I said, I'm going to put that clip in here so you guys can see what I'm talking about. But it really opened my eyes to a lot of things. Black Lives Matter, we made that statement and it divided the entire country. When it was supposed to bring us all closer together. Every time we said Black Lives Matter, what somebody else say? All lives. All lives. Motherfucker, we wasn't even talking to you. <laughs> Always want to be included in some shit. All Lives Matter. Because it wasn't like we were saying only Black Lives Matter. We're just saying Black Lives Matter too. It's simple. And I had a great conversation with one of my close friends, Howard Stern. He got it. He got it. Everybody else didn't get it, but Howard didn't get it. And I think after our conversation, I, I explained it. I had to put it in Caucasian. When y'all say save the whales, that don't mean fuck all the other fish in the ocean. <laughs> It just means the whales need saving. They are in danger. So that was the first person. The next person that I was listening to and really opened my eyes to a lot of things was Jimmy Kimmel. I was watching the Jimmy Kimmel show the other day and Jimmy Kimmel was talking about white privilege. Now, I'm not white per se. So when I hear the term white privilege, it's something that I brushed off, something that I never even thought about. When I did think about white privilege, I had the same stereotypical concept of white privilege as a rich individual who never had to work for anything in their life, never did anything for themselves, have, you know, was fed with a silver spoon, and everything was just handed to them. In my head, that's what white privilege was. Jimmy Kimmel started explaining that white privilege is even more basic than that. White privilege is the person who can walk into a store and not be prejudged. That's white privilege in a sense. White privilege is as basic as going to a store, buying a Band-Aid that matches your skin tone. And I know to a lot of people that you're thinking, why does that even matter? But these are random and small privileges that the black community doesn't have. 
Now to me and to a lot of people, it was something that was put out of my mind, something I didn't think about. But all of these things start to add up over time. White privilege is going to the store and buying a toy for your child that looks like your child. When a black family goes to the store and tries to buy a, a doll or something you know, for their child and they don't have one that looks like their child, no, that's not a huge deal and that's not gonna change the world negatively, but in a sense, that's white privilege. And again, all of these things added up, I didn't understand exactly what white privilege was. And I'm not probably you know, giving this whole statement justice. Jimmy Kimmel explained it even better. And like I said, I'm gonna to try to put that video in here. So hopefully you guys have a better understanding. But what I wanna say is we need to stop and we need to listen. I'm not saying I was wrong in anything that I was thinking. I just didn't know. So I want to take this time to educate myself and to put this video out there to kind of get you guys thinking. Now, I know this isn't the, the regular kind of video that I do. I know some of you guys may not even want to hear this type of video from me, and that's fine. If you don't want to listen, don't listen. But this is my channel. This is my time to speak up. This is my platform. And even though it's not a huge platform, I feel it necessary that every single person speak up and speak up for this injustice. And again, I'm not speaking on any specific situation, but in general, we do not need to stand for one type of person. We do not need to stand for one type of occupation. We need to stand for what's right at the end of the day. It doesn't matter what color you are. It doesn't matter what job you have. It doesn't matter what title you hold. If it's not right, it's not right. And we need to speak up and say something about it. So hopefully you guys took something from this video. These were things that had just been kind of weighing on my heart and I really wanted to speak on them and put this information out there. I'm not afraid to say that I didn't know any better and I'm not afraid to learn. So comment down below what you guys think about this. There's a lot of stuff going on. I hope everybody stays safe out there no matter what you do. Help somebody. It doesn't matter who they are, if you know them or not. We as a people need to come together and just help each other to get through all of these crazy times that we're dealing with right now. So again, thank you guys for watching this video. More stuff to come. Life is just chaotic right now, so I haven't put out as many videos as I would like to. But if you guys have any questions, comments, comment down below. I want to hear what you guys think about this whole situation as far as what I'm speaking on. Everybody has their own opinion and you're entitled to it. Whether or not we agree, we're all people. So thank you guys for watching this video and I'll see you on the next one. I know that a lot of white people bristle when they hear the word privilege, as in white privilege, because there are millions of white people who didn't grow up with money or a good education or a solid family background, or maybe even a family at all. So when they hear the word privilege, they go, what privilege? I grew up with nothing. I, I work hard, I earn what I have. Nobody gave me anything. You hear the phrase white privilege and it's easy to get defensive. I, first time I heard it, I did. I, I did, to me, white privilege was what like Donald Trump had, a wealthy father and a silver spoon in his mouth. It wasn't what I grew up with. So I, I rejected it because I didn't understand what white privilege meant. But I think I do now, and I think I at least understand some of it. And here's what I think it is. People who are white, we don't have to deal with negative assumptions being made about us based on the color of our skin. It rarely happens, if ever. Whereas black people experience that every day, like every day. And please don't tell me you don't ever make assumptions about people based on the color of their skin because I just, I don't believe it. We all do. I know I have, I'm embarrassed to say it, but I have. And so imagine if you can, how frustrating it must be to have to prove yourself to be something other than what people assume you probably are every day sometimes multiple times every day. Yesterday I was watching the news. There was a newscast from Van Nuys and some looters were trying to get into a shop and some people who live in the community who were black flagged down the police to stop the looters. But when the police showed up, they immediately handcuffed the people who flagged them down. The reporter had to tell them, no, not these guys, those guys. Imagine how frustrating it must be to get handcuffed or frisked or pulled over just because you're black. I mean, even if the cop looks in the car and goes, okay, everything's fine, have a nice day. How do you swallow that and move on?
I don't know about you, that would make me furious. And now imagine what it must be like to be brutalized and killed and scared that those things might happen. What happened to George Floyd was on video. I mean, how often does this happen without a camera recording the whole thing? It, it sounds to me like it happens all the time. We just don't see it unless it gets posted online. And then we're shocked, and black people are like, why are you shocked? We've been telling you this has been happening over and over again. So if you're wondering why people are angry and why they can't just march nicely in the street holding up their signs in a single file line, maybe that's why. I read something last night that I think makes a lot of sense. It's this, white privilege doesn't mean your life hasn't been hard, it just means the color of your skin isn't one of the things that makes it harder. Wherever you stand, I don't see how you can argue with that. So thanks for listening. I, I hope that made sense.